revolve around the word life in its broad concept. Thus, we could understand through the tens of uses of that sign how it's important and connected to the religious symbolism. In spite of the common use of that symbol that appears almost in every single temple and tomb within any form of the artistic shapes of the reliefs of the walls or the decoration of the furniture and accessories and amulets, yet the origin from which this symbol was derived is still ambiguous and unknown. The sign symbolized life and air and a cosmic symbol connected to gods. It was also known as a sign of power and authority and immortality. As for the pictographic figure of the sign, we find that it takes a simple and clear shape of an almond circle fixated upon a leg or a perpendicular body separated by a horizontal line. About the origin of this sign, the researchers don't agree about it and many interpretations were told about that issue. Petri and others saw that it's a belt worn by fishermen and the inferior level of workers who relieved the tombs of the old kingdom. For he sees that the belt tied around the waist is the almond circle, while the ribbons that dangle are the tips of the sign. Some others wanted to join between the Ankh symbol and the piece of cloth that covered the male organ in old ages. Gardner differs with all these theories and tended to believe that it's a tie that ties a sort of slippers. Welcome back. El Karnak is great. Abu Simbel is wonderful. But tell you what, our temples and our monuments are scattered all over Egypt. And it's not only Luxor and Aswan. 